New York is the home of gangs. I mean, this is the city where gangs were first written about, the gangs of New York. In the 70s and 80s, you know, or East, East New York was the homicide capital you know, of America. The major source of supply for heroin in America uh, was New York. Still is to a degree, but nothing like it was 35 years ago. New York was the main port of entry. The streets of Harlem and the streets beyond Harlem had dope dealers on corners. They had addicts who were overdosing. We had 2,000 overdose deaths a year. East New York, Brooklyn. It's a hot spot. Brownsville, East New York, Brooklyn. In the 70s, 80s, it's rough. Um, Lucky Bloods is the most dangerous group because some of them seem to be more violent willing to initiate aggression quicker. Let's say a drug set was out there selling drugs on a corner. The Bloods didn't want to actually sell the drugs. What they would do is they would go out and extort the drug dealers. And the word was out that these guys were out there cutting people's faces everywhere, and they didn't want it to happen, so they would actually pay them extortion money. Very common. The streets in New York City uh, are run by the drug posses. Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, and they're entrepreneurial. They're only interested in the market, marketing and selling of drugs. In New York, you would not touch the heroin game if you wasn't willing to die for it. I mean, it was a whole different level of hustling. We saw in New York City during the the, uh, the early and middle 90s uh, a series of gang robberies that ended in a slashing. Dozens of people slashed at the end of a robbery, which made no sense. They were all gang initiations to get into this gang, the New York Latin Kings. As far as the Latin Kings being a violent gang, they just, they took New York by storm. Bodies being burned. Things of this nature, the vicious slashings, the vicious stabbing. It sends a message. We're not going to be messed with. You mess with us, this is what happens to you. It was a doggy dog world. If your product was that good, everyone will know. And the vultures, you know, the crooks and the thieves and the, you know, the stick up kids, the vultures will come out for you. In New York, they don't respect each other. They do a lot of stupid stuff. If I see you sleeping, I take everything you got. They ain't doing nothing good right now. Everything they doing is illegal. Fighting, stabbing people, robbing people. Everybody do that in the street nowadays. This is the godfather of the gangland, right here. South Central, Wise Compton. When I was a blood, it was the thing to be. Somebody gets shot or get killed in the neighborhood, the retaliation is automatic. I was uh, uh, flamed up. You know, with more red on. Catch a couple of people slip, jump out on them, beat them up. You know, go do some body harm to them. When we would see K riding, you something to pull up at a liquor store and see them. Think it was on the poppin'. A gangbanger leaves California and he still wants to gangbang. The only thing that changes is his address. I'm gonna get jumped in. I'm going to get put into TRG. I remember saying that because at that time, that was the thing to do, join a gang. Some of the gang members look like the prototype 60s scumbag, greasy, fat biker. <laughs> and other ones will walk in with, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 worth of jewelry, their colors on. What does a Hell's Angel want when he walks into a bar? 
He wants everybody to get out of his way. If somebody objects, they get tuned up. The Fresno Bulldogs are now, I would say, they're a street gang. They're a real independent gang because there's no shot caller for the Bulldogs. I'm mad at the world. I'm ready for somebody to look at me wrong, so they just take it off. I'm out there head hunting. I'm gonna ride on you, you gonna ride on me. If I got a thumper on me, I'm gonna wet your ass up. Motorcycle Association says 99% of motorcyclists are law-abiding. Only 1% are outlaws. And to this day, the Hells Angels and other outlaw bikers call themselves the one percenters. The Hells Angels always had this magical myth about them as lovable rascals, as rebels without a cause. That began uh, back in 1947. They started in the city of Fontana, down in San Bernardino County. Guys that just wanted to get together and started riding motorcycles. Uh, a lot of them were uh, ex-veterans, named after a bomber squadron called the Hells Angels, uh, World War II bomber squadron. In the early days, the Hells Angels weren't in crime for business. Through the 60s, things began to change. A uh, combination of the hippie movement, the drug movement, and the Hells Angels became one of the, the biggest drug pushers, if you want, all through uh, uh, the 1960s. The public has been duped with the amount of money that they spent in the, the 70s and 80s. Working with big public relations firms, do these toy for tots drives. Today's Hells Angel is a bona fide organized crime group. They have very intertwined networks facilitating drug trade from Mexican Mafia out of um, Mexico, the marijuana drug trade out of Canada, importing club drugs out of Europe. The Hells Angels in the United States have taken over meth. Meth is the, is the cheap drug for the, the trailer park boys. Well, you try it once and you're addicted. Virtually everybody that's out of eighth grade can manufacture methamphetamine. If it kills you, well, that's too bad. If it doesn't kill you, well, they'll sell it. Violence is part of their life. In order to control turf, in order to control the other gangs, in order to sell their drugs, he who's most violent or he who's most intimidating wins. Some of the things were shocking at the gang's clubhouse. People beaten with baseball bats, tire irons, women raped, um, pretty regular, you know, couple, three a month sort of thing. Not a big deal to them. You know, if you're just a regular citizen who needs an attitude adjustment, they're just going to beat you up and leave you on the side of the wall. You got a full patch member. to walk through a grocery store and just film the reactions but with your camera, uh, you'll see what the intimidation is. People are afraid of that. One percenter patch, teardrops, marks a kill. You know, whatever they wear that denotes that's their status in that culture. Gives them the power they have. It's a bulldog turf, period. You go to the West, you know, there's a lot of cribs, there's a lot of bloods. They know where we live, we know where they live. A lot of them leave us alone because they ain't ready for what we got. Go up the phone. We have foes all over Chicago. But see, you're not going to go in a black soul or a new breed territory and try to work. It's not tolerated, so you got to stay within your own area. Gangs band together for protection from those who encroach upon their turf. 
or those who come in and try to establish themselves within their turf, they consider themselves the soldiers of the neighborhood. You see logo, you see cars on the freeway, you see tattoo parlors selling shirts. Everybody's representing H-Town. Everybody wants to represent where they're from, and the real gang members are gonna get upset about that. Now we're gonna have people get shot, turf wars, all kind of stuff's gonna be going on. Well, this is a four corn hustler neighborhood. If you're not a folk, you can't sell drugs here. It was a chosen people that was chose to sell drugs. The Four Corn Hustlers. We have a large portion of the gang territory on the west side. The gang will also travel into rival neighborhoods. And they challenge and confront those rivals by marking rival neighborhood turfs. just to let people know they were there. Logan Heights was here, Red Steps was here. A fight for turf, for women, you know, the little fights, and a lot of times they escalate into bigger fights, and then it might be a killing. One of their main purposes was to instill the fear in the community that this is MS, this is MS territory. If you're Brown Pride or about to look or 18th Street, don't come in here and not expect to get away with it. Kill, rape, and control. Brightmore runs from Schoolcraft and Five Mile to Schoolcraft and Seven Mile. After Seven Mile, you got Seven Mile dogs. Totally different. We claim Brightmore. That was my hood. You protect your hood. Every day you sit there, then you got homicide coming by, you're like, okay, I know you, I know you, wanna come look at this body. So you go look at it, can't recognize that at all. Too many holes in that body. It was normal. That's the scar from where they cut me open. I've been shot 23 times on different occasions. I've been shot in the head, point blank, nine times in the chest and stomach. I'm fighting with killers. You know, I'm, as they say, I'm swimming with sharks, land sharks. One kid got hit in the calf with an AK-47 round and literally just flayed the back of his leg open. He's a 16-year-old kid, no pain medication. His response was, don't worry about me. You need to worry about yourself. Police get shot, too. I've come home with bullet holes on my car window from Puerto Rico. So I'm driving home from work. They tried to shoot me. I got stabbed nine times. I got stabbed three times with a ice pick. I got stabbed in the skull. 38 stitches, cut my ear in half. All I remember is I was fighting. All kinds of guys started jumping me. When I got up, I had 12 wounds. I stabbed me 12 times. I almost died, but I'm still here, so it's all good. You gotta be cold-blooded in this game. It's the only way people learn. It's violence. I just want to hurt anybody. And I didn't care if I went to the extremes of actually stomping them until they, you know, until there was no head left. I went down to this guy's cell downstairs, and um, I was standing there talking to him. And at one point, he just pulled down on me and took that knife and started stabbing me in the stomach with it. They were just handling their business, you know, with the first person they could, and I happened to be that one. I ain't gonna sugarcoat it, I'm gonna give it to you raw. Just like a Vietnam vet. We've been through the same gunplay, just in the urban area. We weren't in the jungle, but we call it a concrete jungle. <laughs>